Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Agent's Edge. My name is Ryan Palomini. Today I have a very special guest with me, Miss Anna St. Louis. Really excited to have Anna on it. And I gotta say, um, for those of you that have been watching for a long time, you know I interview some of the top people in our industry. And when I met Anna a few months ago, I was immediately drawn to the success that she's had and to her story and really to the ambition that she brings to the industry, which is so sometimes it's really hard to find. And, you know, just the first time I had a conversation with Anna was really refreshing to see someone that's just out there doing the deal, grinding and really making things happen. And her story is so inspiring. And I'm really excited for her to be able to share with all of you watching her story. Because look, you know, I talk a lot about the struggles that I've gone through and that, you know, a lot, probably things that most people won't talk about in this industry, right? And, and I know this is all about transparency on my channel and Anna's gonna be super transparent today about some of the things she's overcome, some of the struggles that she's had, which led to a lot of the successes though that she's currently having and has had throughout her career in the insurance industry and the financial world. Uh, so make sure you really listen to this entire interview because if you're like me, and you listen to her for more than five minutes, you're gonna be inspired. <laughs> so for those of you out there that may be struggling, maybe like Anna, you came from a different country and things were different and you had to really adapt, know that it's possible. And Anna's story is really about it's possible and it's incredibly inspiring. She's one of the top women leaders in the financial industry and you're gonna see why shortly. So Anna, thank you so much for being on today. Appreciate you being here, thanks for coming down. Um, Tell us a little bit about you. So let's start with, you know, where are you from originally and when did you come here and kind of that whole beginning and how did that whole thing start? Thank you, Ryan. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Anna San Luis, as you well stated. Uh, thank you for such an introduction. It's um, really an honor being here. And uh, yeah, I'm originally from Colombia, South America. And um, it's funny that you say that I'm all about possible. Because in one of the few speeches I have done, I say to people, like, the differences between impossible and possible is the I am. So if you, like, divide it, I am, and put just a dash, possible, so impossible becomes an I'm possible. I love it. So it's one of the things I always, like, love it. say to people in, the, um, in my speeches. But... Yeah, I'm original from Colombia. Um, been in the finances industry industry for over 20 years. Um, when I was there, I was an international financial advisor, uh, helping people around the world doing investments with uh, first floor platforms and so forth. I actually um, have a degree in finances, and I have a master's in marketing player and a degree on um, psychoanalysis, a diploma, I'm sorry, a okay. diploma in psychoanalysis. And I have four years of electronic engineering. Um, which all of that, <laughs> when you move to another country, <laughs> you, um, and you don't have that, um, those credits from any local college or something, mm -hmm. they literally uh, say, um, thank you, but, um, is nothing kind of they can do of it. They so don't transfer the credits from where you work. Legit. I mean, I did yeah, my right. degree in Colombia right. and my master's in Spain. And um, so anyway, uh, I moved up here in August 2013. Um, I was a single mom, two girls. And uh, when I moved up here, legit, I sold the stuff. Uh, I moved to Boston, Massachusetts. Love it. Uh, actually, US was my last option. <laughs> My first option was Hong Kong. I love the culture. Wow. Uh, I, I, I always feel attracted to the British culture, and Hong Kong was one of their colonies, the last colonies. Uh, so I like it. And the financial war and, you know, stuff. And um, my second option was England, of course. Mm -hmm. And Manchester was a really, really great city. And in one of my last trips, I was actually in Florida, and a friend of mine invited me to Boston. So I love Boston, love Massachusetts, so I move up here. And uh, once I get here, no, nobody trying to make my living. Um, went to a lot of interviews. Again, like, yeah, 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 but no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my English was like 30, 40%. I'm still learning. 
So, um, but I'm glad of all those no's. Uh, because sometimes I stop and I say, what if they say yes to me? Mm-hmm. I will be an employee. I will be uh, accomplishing somebody else's dreams. A totally different path. Than it, right, right, today, right, right, right. So I'm like, oh, thank God they say no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when I started, like, um, going in the path, like, okay, uh, nine to five, but maybe it won't. Even that I speak Portuguese, Spanish, and English, that I have my degrees, that was not enough just because I was not from such and such university or mm-hmm. whatever. So um, the industry that opened the doors to me in this uh, country was insurance. Uh, in U.S., the financial uh, field is 100% different, and insurance was something like, a, wow, okay, so mm-hmm. let, let's see. And I started with voluntary benefits, uh, had a great mentor, like a great mentor. If you are in an early stage or or even if you are in advanced career and you feel lost, find a good mentor. Having a good mentor is, I think, the key point for you either to succeed or you either get stuck in it. Absolutely. So I got a person that had a work ethic that she cares about my success. Mm. And when I say find a good mentor, it's not the richest one or the smartest sure. one or the prettiest one or the, oh, it's work out, whatever. No, is that person care about your success. And that is not easy to find. Uh, but not in this industry, no. <laughs> in this industry, no, at least. But um, so I, I, she taught me, like, inside out of the industry, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, how to be honest and transparent, and how to value all your customers mm. and do everything for them. Um, because companies, a lot. But customers, you work hard to find them. Yeah. So I put them always in my first place. Then I changed from to another company and start growing and start now in the management position and start growing, hit all my goals, you know, then... Then I discovered I was being robbed. <laughs> yeah, but hold on. So in, in that process, though, you went from, and this is what's impressive to me. I mean, seriously, think about this. You went out, you started in the insurance world, right? Yeah. Then you moved into the securities world as a full-blown financial advisor. Yeah. So you went, you passed your securities license. Yeah. I mean, think about how hard that is for most people. You're coming from another country where English is not your first language, and you go and you get securities license, become a manager, and are overseeing, what, how much were you overseeing at that point in, in assets under management, roughly? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, well, that was like $65 million. <laughs> Right. But, but how many years were you in the United States at that point? Five. Five years. So, But this is the thing, Joe. So you know to work in insurance, you need a license, right? So when you work, when I started in the voluntary benefit side of it, the first license you need is health. hmm I did six times that test, <laughs> six times. I passed the seventh. And a, a quick, short, fun story. I memorized the whole material. <laughs> and I feel so frustrated, like, what do you want from me, Estate? Was a couple of questions I did not understand because, of course, my language, you sure. know, I mean, English is like my third language. <laughs> so was one question that it says, Lisa's husband died like two years ago. Who bear the health insurance expenses? In my head, I'm like, what an animal is doing here? <laughs> I mean, I was like, so I- imagine. But anyway, so don't give up. I was back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. The sixth time I got 68%. Oh, my God. I took the test. I was walking, I get into the car, I almost destroyed my car inside because <laughs> I was so frustrated. Anyway, but it took me seven times. Like the seventh time I got the score, I passed. And since then has been just nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Um, so you can say to say persistency is one of your qualities. Persistency, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, a quitter never will be a winner. And a oh, winner okay. is never a quitter. So yeah, no persistency. So yes, yeah, so then um, I started my management with voluntary benefits. Then I started in the individual side, and then was when I went to the financial advisor side. And then um, I had a big team, 65 AUMs, 
um, wasn't that attractive to me, that field. So I just start like digging in more in the individual side. Mm -hmm. So I step in, in the jungle of, you know, final spans, mortgage protection, all the kind of things. Most of the people watching, they're in there right now, <laughs> right? So they get it. They get the struggles. And yeah. we talk a lot about that on our show, the struggles. And so I know you went through some struggles. So tell us a little about that. How did that work for you? How big? You built a big agency, right, as, at one point. Uh, walk us through that. How did that whole thing come Yeah, about? so um, I, I like the management side of it. I like to help people, and I like to be a good mentor with the people that comes to me. So I went to work with this company that offers me the opportunity. I start bringing people, bringing people, bringing people, uh, maximize the distribution and everything. But then <clears throat> I'm, I'm always, I, I have two principal uh, things that I like to take care of, and it's the clients and my agents. And with the companies I'm working with does not represent the values I want to transfer to my clients and my agents, I just move on. Um, but sometimes, like you were saying uh, a couple of days ago, uh, we outgrow the companies we are with. And my vision has been always been big. Like I know it's something more beyond this one. Mm -hmm. And I want to get there, and I know when I get there is more afterwards sure. and so forth. So not every company will offer you those limitless mm -hmm. opportunities. So I changed from companies, and I'm going to make a quick stop here sure. because actually my husband asked me, oh, yes, by the way, I got married three months later. I came to this country. <laughs> so, <laughs> But anyway, so my husband asked me one day, like, have you ever regret leaving the first company you start with? Because you did really well. You li literally, like, your income was six question. figures. You mm -hmm. know, I, I was, like, after I started this business, about one year later, I was making over 200000 in voluntary benefits. That commissions are really, really small. But wow. um, so he's like, have you ever regret? Like, you may be, you know, a super regional or VP mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I haven't because... That knowledge, along with the whole knowledge I, I acquire and the experiences and the different people and connections I have mm -hmm. done through my changes, has made me a powerful leader now. Like, wow. if you're out there struggling because your app line or your manager or your boss or whatever is the situation you have right now, think about something. Knowledge is power. You can be with no money. You can be with no office. You can be with no leads. But if you have knowledge and you build your brain and a specialized knowledge, like the rich dad and poor dad explain in their mm -hmm. book, a specialized knowledge is what can, you, can get you anywhere. So don't feel afraid and don't feel frustrated if you change and change and change. Oh, my God, I cannot. Just focus on how could you enrich yourself with knowledge. Okay, I learned this from this person. I have learned this from this person. I learned this from this person. And then apply it to something that get you where you want to go. Um, if you watch motivational videos and stuff, like a common factor is rich people get rich from their ideas, mm -hmm. not from their two plus two equal, equals four. I don't know. If, yeah, no, if I you understand. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, so all of that experiences and different perspectives and different uh, lines of leads and like uh, like I was telling you last night, um, the first time I bought a lead was in 2018, <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> now what? I have to pay for what? So uh, so it's different ways to get leads. It's different ways to get to a prospect. Uh, but the most important thing, and one of the things that we fall a lot, especially with social media and stuff, is comparing ourselves with somebody else. Right. Uh, this is a really competitive industry. And as a woman, and a Spanish woman, uh, I have to work twice harder than a white guy. I'm sorry, sounds a little bit racist, but, um, but it is true. And I got a lot of get out of my house, Dory is Spanish. 
Uh, I don't want you in my business. I'm gonna call the police, things like that. Wow. The first time that happened to me, and I travel in a lot of countries. And the first time that happened something like that, I was not door knocking businesses with my first company, uh, the company I was working with, and I was door, door knocking, and an old, an old woman, a, a, an old lady, like, get out of my business right now, door is Spanish, before I call the police. Wow. She was so loud, that actually was a Dominican guy in the parking lot, and I, 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 so my reaction was like, okay, I'm sorry. And I get out and I stand, I remember standing in the parking lot like, what just happened? Oh my God, right? awful, right. And she was so loud that the Dominican guy that was in the parking lot was like, are you okay? Jeez. Did you want me to go and break her face? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, legit, it was really offensive. Yeah. And I was like, a lot of emotions come through my body. Uh, yes, I want to go back and break all the whole things she has inside. I want to laugh. I want to cry. Yeah. I want to, but like after five minutes, I was like, it's not me. It's her ignorance point. Sure. Absolutely. And then I could not afford to go to jail because I wasn't, you know, getting my residency <laughs> and other kind of things. <laughs> I'm joking. But, um, but yeah, so it's, it's been a lot of struggles and, um, Something I have learned over the time is I love when people say no to me. Regardless if it's a lead, if it's a client, if it's a prospect, if it's a company, if it's my manager, if it's a boss, whatever, because it challenged me to be better. Mm -hmm. It challenged me to, oh, you tell me no, I'm going to prove you yes. So. No, I love it. I picked up a lot of stuff through there. So one of the things that I picked up on is your mindset is so different from a lot of people. And just listening to you, how did you develop the strong mindset that you have? I mean, I'm listening to you and you're referencing books, you're referencing authors. Is personal development a really big part of your success and your growth? And walk us through, how do you, how do you become mentally stronger like you have through all the adversity that you go through, through moments like that where you have someone who's being ignorant, well, be polite, right? Uh, how do you keep going? How, what is it in your mind that allows you to say, you know what, I'm just gonna push that aside and then I'm gonna get past it. What do you do on a daily basis to keep your mind sharp and to keep you thinking? Um, I have touched bottom. Like I explained, I've been a single mom for 15 years, well, I was. Um, Colombia is an undeveloped third world country and when you face a lot of like challenges, like I was telling you, mm -hmm. and you don't have any more option than to be a strong, I mean, to me, it's two kind of people in, the, uh, kind of people in this world. Mm -hmm. When you get hit by a problem, by a circumstance, you either get down in the floor and cry, well, all of us get down in the floor and cry, right? <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> but is the one who get up, take some medicine for the headache, wash it off, and keep going. And the another one that keep crying and crying and crying and crying, waiting for someone to bring help or pick him up, uh, pick, the, pick the person up and things like that. And, and I never wait for that. Mm. I learned that me, myself, and I. If I need a hand, I, w I see my other hand. And from that, like of course, God, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a spiritual person. I believe in God. And uh, any supreme being you, you believe in, the universe, the energy, I, I believe a lot in energy oh, as yeah. well. You um, got a lot of it, so I can <laughs> understand. But this is the thing though, so I understood everything is possible. Again, mm -hmm. I'm possible. Um, I understood as well that universe, God, Allah, whatever it is, whatever you believe, your supreme being, will never put in your imagination anything you cannot make possible. Mm. We are the one who sabotage that. So I got pregnant when I was 17 years old. I was in second year of electronic engineer. 
I was one of the most smartest person. I was full scholarship, everything. And I got pregnant. And a lot of people like, get an abortion, don't get the kid, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I will not. Fast forward, uh, I'm gonna tell you how my girl is, so you cannot make the math, <laughs> but <laughs> um, you just made the circumstances. And yes, I read a lot. Uh, one tip I would like you to take from this is be self-educated and self-motivated. Action fits motivation. That's my another favorite sentence. I'm not in the mood, especially with teenagers nowadays. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. For real? You're not in the mood? OK. So um, read books. Uh, if, if you don't read, I, I hate reading. So I do my Audible or Amazon or whatever mm -hmm. it is. You listen, podcasts, like whatever. But feed your mind with good things. Um, very important. Very important. Yeah, Especially like, in today's world, very important. So, like, again, in Colombia, we don't have welfare, we don't have unemployment, we don't have a lot of help. So, you don't work, you don't eat. Done. <laughs> like, done. You gotta figure it out. Right. And I have the, I will say the proud to say that since 2004, I don't work for anybody. Mm. Even being a single mom, because a lot of maybe women are there. Oh, I have two kids, I have three kids, I have a kid and I don't have time and I don't have, we build excuses. Another sentence that I love and I say to people to make them feel bad, yes, is when you want something, you find motivation. Mm -hmm. When you don't want something, you just find excuses. Very powerful, say it again. When you want something, you find motivation. When you don't want something, you just find excuses. That's really powerful. And, and, and you and I were talking last night, and I, th I said to you, one of the most powerful things I think that you possess, which is hard to find, is the self-motivation inner drive that you constantly have, right? Because so many people do make excuses about why they can't do something or they don't have that inner drive. And I think that's why a lot of people fail, you know? And, and you and I were talking about what how do we grow to the next level? How do, how do you get to these levels? And, I'm, and it's, it's what you can teach, right? As, so, as a mentor or as someone who's working with somebody, there's a, there's a difference between what I can teach. I can teach sales, I can teach leadership, right? You can, as a mentor, you can teach certain things. I can't teach heart. I can't teach someone to have heart, right? And, or self-motivation. We can motivate people by saying, you want money, here's a contest, go do it, right? And you get motivated for a short period of time. But you have a different self-motivation that is so powerful. And everybody watching, I'm sure you could probably tell by now, she's a very self-motivated person, which makes you unique and very different. But listening to you, here's what I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that a lot of the struggles you went through, you just, you, you could have used that excuse, right? Language isn't great when I first moved here. You said 30, 40% English. A lot of people told you no. Uh, in Colombia, there are struggles, right, with help you there. It's you just do it or don't, right? <laughs> right? And that made you a stronger person. Is that where your self-motivation comes from? And how can other people look at your story or look at things that inspire you and, and start helping themselves become more self-motivated? Small decisions. Small decisions. So I have four kids now, right? Uh, I bring my two and my husband bring his two and my husband's kids, he has full custody of them. So I raise them. Um, so one of the things I told to one of them, we have a little bit of discussions there, is like I say, you build your life. You build your own story. You can attract, I don't believe in that, so <laughs> if I'm sorry, whatever. So, but it's funny because She's a teenager, she just turned 18, and every single excuse or, or mindset she has given me and everything, I found that a lot in agents. Mm. <laughs> 40 years, 50 years, 60 years old with kids, single, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, for real? So it's a challenge to change the blueprint. It's a challenge because we, we have told things, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is the another thing. Like, so when you make small decisions, right, every day you make small decisions. 
You get out of bed, you decide if you're gonna do your bed right now or you don't. You decide if you take a shower or not. You decide if you eat breakfast, uh, sugar, 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 or you eat fruit. You decide if you, you make decisions, right? You, for example, I work out almost every day. At what time? I get up at 4 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning, I'm in the gym at 5 in the morning. So 5 to 6 is me time at the gym. Um, and my oldest one has a similar mindset as mine, God, thank God. But it, she's like, we need to do the things where we don't want to do the things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn. So, but that is discipline, right? So something that I say, for example, with my team, we, we were working in our business plan of 2023, and okay, what are your problems? Oh, these, 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 these. I'm like, okay, let's just start doing small decisions. Mm. Small decisions. You don't need to do everything at once because it's not gonna happen. Small decisions. You know what? I have these prospects. Oh, I'm so overwhelmed. You're not overwhelmed, you're just disorganized. So, like a quick tip, for example. Do not do a to-do list. Don't. Because that will get you more overwhelmed. Like, I mean, raise your hand if you do your to-do list and you actually get everything done in one day. <laughs> uh, Most don't get maybe if I have like three things, yeah. yeah, yeah, but, and the another thing is we, oh, I have tons of things to do. Write it down, five. Yeah, you're not as busy as you think you are. Right, 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 so we make ourselves busy and um, so again, make a small decisions. Uh, actually, it's funny because in the meeting this morning, I was talking about this, mm -hmm. um, to like just organize your calendar uh, what is not in my calendar is not happening. Um, if you're not a structure, find a structure, either in your leadership, in your mentors, in your uplines, in, in, in anyone. Be independent is not easy. Be independent. Don't treat this independent job. Oh, I have more time to get done my nails. I have more time to do food shopping. Oh, I have time to go and drink some beer with my pulse and you know, is the World Cup, so oh my God, two o'clock, I have to watch the you know, semi-final, whatever. It's not that I'm on top of it, but, uh, but make small decisions. Um, if you don't exercise, you don't need to go and run five miles, no? Go and walk 10 minutes, right. 10 minutes, but make the decision to do it every single day. If you do that, the day you don't do it, you're gonna feel like you're missing something. Guess what is mm -hmm. happening? You're building a habit. Small decisions build a habit. A habit build a lifestyle, and a lifestyle wow. will determine your success. Powerful, powerful. It's a simple disciplines every day that make that just make a big difference in your life. And I think that's what a lot of people miss. You know, I mean, I look at the successful people that I've coached and I coach all the time, and that's what it is. It's just, they have a routine, they're very disciplined, and they don't deviate from what it is that they're trying to get to. Because when you have all these distractions and excuses to your point, right, it's very easy to say, I'll go to the gym tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. You know, I'll, I'll just do it tomorrow. Or, you know what, I don't really don't feel like dialing today. How many times have you heard that from your advisors? Uh, did you dial? Yeah, I made four dials. What did you do yeah. the rest of the day? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. That took you four minutes. Congratulations. Now what? It legit. Right. And you, these excuses. And so, look, we could keep going on for hours, but I wanted you to see a different way of thinking from someone who has, who's had the opportunities to have excuses of why she couldn't, has overcome them, and become as successful as you are. So let's finish up with this. What does 2023 look like for you? And what are some of the things that are motivating you to get to the next level? What are you striving for in 2023? So I want just to summarize after COVID. Uh, COVID was the best thing that happens to me, to my agency. But afterwards, I faced a lot of challenges and a lot of changes and was like legit like this. Um, it kept me motivated that I put aside my emotions mm -hmm. and my vision. Uh, if you don't have a goal, you're not going to succeed no matter how amazing your mentor is, how amazing your opportunity is. In Colombia, we have a saying, I'm gonna try to translate it, is if you don't know where you're going, you can take any bus, any train, any airplane, it will take you nowhere. But if you go where you're going, you know where you're going, it's so easy because so, uh, one time, every morning, 
when I come back from the gym and start getting ready for work, I play on YouTube motivational videos every single day. And Arnold Schwarzenegger says when he was 10, he saw a poster of someone from New York that was um, this huge guy, Conan? Well, Conan the Barbarian? That one, that yep. one. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> he's like, I want to be that. And I want to be Hercules. And I want to mm. be that. And he says, once I know where I was going, everything was so much easier. Oh, yeah. And that was so impactful for me. So 2023, I'm already building 2023 from right now. Like, you want to be successful next week? Build your week today. Don't wait until, ah, let's wait. Ah, you know, it's, ah, have January you seen January 1st, the, let's, let's, it, you don't get the momentum going right. January 1st. It starts now. Yeah, right, right, right. So, because I already know what I'm going to get from 2023. I already put every single one of my team where you're going to be from one year from today. Mm-hmm. What is the action? So, I do reverse engineer, Right. That is the result, let's now backtrack of what you need to get done to get over there. So my 2023 looks with a lot of millions, <laughs> with a lot of uh, successful stories, but most important, with a lot of people getting impact in a really positive way from me and my team. Excellent, excellent. And I, I know it's gonna happen. I've seen your business plan, it's impressive. I know you're going to hit every single one of those goals on there because I know you, you're self-motivated, and you'll make it happen one way or the other. You'll find a way. You'll dig deep. And I hope that for all of you watching that you're taking a few things away from here. Number one, the inspiration. I'm, I loved it. I'm possible. I love that. I, I'm, I'm stealing that from you. I'll give you credit for like two more shows, and I'm stealing <laughs> it. Uh, no, but I love that. Take notes. But self-motivation, disciplines small daily actions you know listening you're going from the gym where you're working out exercising getting your brain moving your body moving then you're going from that to personal development motivation i mean what a way to start your morning there's no wonder why you're so fired up every morning i'm like where did she get the energy from got it makes sense Uh, you know but it's possible you may be going through something right now and it may be the end of the world for you the reality is it's not it'll pass but you got to get clear thinking. You know, just because you're going through a struggle right now does not mean it's over. You just got to get clarity as to where you're going and what you have to do to get yourself out of that rut. Because anybody can get themselves out of it by just changing their thought process, right? Oh, I'm having a terrible day. Well, how long are you going to keep telling yourself you're having a bad day before you switch and go to a good day, right? We tell ourselves right. these things. And that's what you need to do. Daily disciplines. Get self-motivated because we can't teach heart. You just can't teach it. It's something you either have or you don't, but you can develop it. And this has been so inspiring for me, working with you and just seeing what you've overcome and, and, and the things that you're doing on a daily basis is inspiring to me. So I want to thank you so much for being on today, sharing your story. I know you're going to inspire a lot of people watching this. Uh, for those of you that are ready to have the best 2023 ever, uh, reach out to her. And she, you can pay her millions of dollars to coach you. <laughs> she'll, uh, she'll motivate you every day. But, um, but thank you so much for being on today. Your story is incredibly inspiring for men, women, everybody out there listening to this. It's time to take the action. Time to get to the next level because if you can do it and I can do it, anybody can do it. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for being on. Thank As you. always, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Listen, if you have any comments, hit the comment below. If you were inspired or if honest is something that just really got you going, hit the comment button below. Put it down there. We want to hear it. It's going to give her more fuel to fire. We're definitely going to have her on a lot more uh, to keep giving us inspiration. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode.